Good evening. Thank you for coming here tonight. Tonight, we are remembering Marilyn Monroe, who has inspired, taunted, and mystified countless lives. Her image is more alive today, 50 years after her passing, than in her lifetime. And as the mythology continues in the world by admirers, historians, and writers who make it up as they go along, filmmakers, ex-husbands, and photographers who each think they have captured the real Marilyn, and biographers who find an angle, who try to find an angle, but never find the real thing. They weave fantastic scenarios surrounding her death. They all share a secret. They all were her close friend. She stays in our consciousness, tittering on invented history and memory. She haunts me with many questions that will never be answered. But what comes back to me are my father's photographs of her. This truth I protect. His photos remain frozen in time. I am so, so pleased to share with you some excerpts from my book, Marilyn Exposures, Intimate Exposures. Um, we're going to skip over chapter one. And I'm going to go to Chapter 2, Norma Jean Doherty, 1946 to 1948. Timing is everything, or was it destiny? Perhaps it was something magical that in July of 1946 brought the unknown Norma Jean Doherty to walk aimlessly past my dad on Sunset Boulevard just as he was leaving his dentist's office and for him to follow her and give her his card and say, Miss, this is strictly professional. I'd like to take some photo tests of you. Hollywood was the flame to the moth. Every girl, the hometown cheerleader, the girl who was told by her boyfriend, you should be in pictures, dear, rushed to Hollywood, crossing oceans, mountain ranges, and deserts on buses and trains, waited at truck stops. Anyone could do this. You didn't have to be born a princess or go to Vassar. They came to sit at the right fountain to get through the right door, meet the right person, the one that would reshape their destiny with a single phone call. They bleached their hair, wondering if it was blonde enough, buy new teeth, erase an accent, and commit fraud with a new name. Step up, spin the wheel. Anyone could get lucky. This is Hollywood. In this heated carnival of pink frosted cotton candy and fast roller coasters, the talent scouts peruse the fresh faces on the covers of men's magazines. If you had a good photo book, you'd be seen. It was part of the job to see newcomers. The studios had their own singing, dancing, and acting schools. You could become part of the Groom for Stardom factory, put under contract, and even get a weekly check. A Bernard of Hollywood photograph of a pretty girl with a twinkle in her eye in a two-piece polka dot or leopard print bathing suit accentuating cleavage in post-war climate had become ubiquitous. His famous signature appeared on billboards, calendars, and dozens of popular men's magazines. She was not only spinning the heads of the male species, she was also turning the wheels of commerce. She sold everything from socks to soap to sports cars to chocolate to girdles she brought with her optimism, progress, and a cash register. For dad 
and Norma Jean, this time would remain in memory as an intangible bond of friendship that would outlast her marriages and various relationships with other men. Neither could have foreseen that that moment would become Hollywood history. Norma <coughs> told my dad, I want to become a movie star, she said, swirling her hips. It's been my dream since I was a kid. <clears throat> my dad responded to her, Norma, darling, whatever you do, never put hot on hot. That looks vulgar and would turn a real man off. Let your curves tell it all and counteract the body language with a complete look of innocence. Your eyes should be saying and asking, why do men look at me? Blend waif with Venus, and you will create combustion in your photos. On the back of his photo, my dad wrote, this one right here, he wrote, this pinup photo, together with my girl next door photos, got Marilyn her first motion picture contract with Fox. <coughs> On this photo sleeve, my dad wrote, this was the cover of Laugh, which got Howard Hughes interested in Marilyn Monroe. Could you imagine? <laughs> Someday, I'm going to have oodles and oodles of fan mail, just like Betty Grable, Marilyn once said. I thought this quote of Marilyn's was quite moving. When I was eight, I used to look out of the orphan asylum at night and see a big lighted up sign that read RKO Pictures. There must have been thousands of girls sitting alone like me, dreaming of becoming a movie star. But I'm not going to worry about them. I'm dreaming the hardest. I'm going to chip. Now go to, um, there's a chapter before this called Johnny and Marilyn. We're going to skip that. We're going to go to chapter four, fame, 1951 to 1953. Marilyn learned to wear mink and white fox. Make her eyes the color of dumb blonde, a sad baby blue. Be liquid and pour herself into gowns. Sip champagne and walk. She learned to realize the extent of her fame and laugh, spring into cars and limos, hide in doorways, not talk to strangers. Strangers were unpredictable. They asked for an autograph, a favor, a photo, wrote letters proposing marriage, and sent pubic hair. She unabashedly threw herself in to her sensuality of her body, took pleasure in men desiring her. It amused and excited her. If a man in a truck whistled at her, shouting, Hey, Marilyn, we love you! It was just fine. Just like when she was Norma Jean, the teenager, smiling and giggling when Dad whistled to catch her attention. She was well aware of her power she had over others. She needed the proof of being loved. It temporarily erased her fears of being unwanted. Being loved by her public saved her. Now I'm going to skip over um, the chapter that would have been the beginning of the end and go to chapter 6, Requiem, 1962 to 2012. <coughs> <coughs> Allow me to read what Marilyn wrote. I like old people. They have great qualities younger people don't have. I want to grow old without a facelift. They take the life out of a face, the character. I want to have the courage to be loyal to the face I've made. Sometimes I think it would be easiest to avoid old age to die young, but then you never complete life, would you? 
you never wholly know yourself. Did you discover Marilyn Monroe? Uh, my camera and myself, we have been most influential in a meteoric career. And we came to my sitting into the studio and said, Mr. Bernard, can you take some sexy pictures of me? So I said, all right, we do this. But you know, to me, the girl next door type is your she had the peaches and cream complexion.